Sailed in here on three boats, one powered by, one sailing by Bosco, one went by my brother, and the other by Bruce Gregg and I. We anchored and started looking at property. Said this is the place. We had, we, had, we had gone to Shaw and Orcas, but we didn't like them as well, and Friday Harbor had too many people. And so we fell in love with Lopez and been that way ever since, and that was, well, we, we sailed in in 80, one, we bought, I think we bought the property, we, bought, we, put the, we put the money down on the property that fall, but we didn't move up here until, I moved up here in 88, I think Patrick moved up here, in, I'm not exactly sure, 84 maybe. Yeah, we, we had 13, 13 acres total in the family. Patrick, Patrick built his first, and then, and then he helped Kuna and Yohani build theirs. Everybody kind of worked on that. And um, my husband built ours. They called us the windmill boats because we, we all had uh, wind generators going around. And you know, they were, they're ferro cement boats. Patrick's is a 50, 68, 68 foot with its bow sprit, mine is 48 with its bow sprit. And Bosco's was a west sail. How was the sail coming up here? You do motor sailing, some some motor, some sailing. Just depends on the on the weather. But the but the boats are, but the boats are heavy and sturdy and built for that. Take a lot more weather than you want to see, or that I want to see. Right. And mine was the Kismet, and Patrick's was the Harmony. Bosco's was finished in Half Moon Bay. His his was a uh, fiberglass hull. Ours were both built there. Mine, we, we poured the coal on and built it in about 10 months. Bosco was Patrick's assistant on his boat and on my boat, and he, was working, and he worked on, the, on finishing the, the <clears throat> his boat. He, and and my, my mother helped him build his deck beams. She, helped, she, she and my, my youngest son built my deck beams, and my son, Chris, who's been a Boeing engineer for years and just retired, did all, turned all the turn posts for the rail. He came home with a set of matching candlesticks and I said, if you can make two alike, you can make 18 alike. You want the job? He said, yeah, mom. So we bought him a, we bought him a lathe that he, could use, that he could use whenever he wanted after that. How old was your son when he did that? 15. And, those, and, and, and then the rails and the rest of the windows and everything were done by Patrick in combination with Bosco and Bruce. Why did you decide to uh, leave Half Moon Bay? Uh, we never intended to stay there. That's not a, that's a good place to build a boat, but it's not a destination. My three sons were about five, seven, and eight, I believe, when they and they were standing at the, on the top of a ridge in the in the in the in the California mountains. What is it? What are they down there? Uh, the Cascades. They pat they backpacked in the Cascades when they up up until they were young teenagers. And then we came up here and they 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 did some backpacking in the in the Olympics and in the Cascades. And and Tom's first backpack was was a pant leg sewed together and made into a little pack. And he and there's a there's a there's a, a large pine cone in there that he picked up. He said, I want to, he was going to go to preschool. And he said, I want to go to, I want to take this to my cool, for my school. He, he cause he, he had a funny little lisp. And, and uh, I said, well, I suggest, honey, that you wait until you're coming back down the mountain because you have to carry it yourself. And so he, he came, when he came back down the mountain, he picked up that cone that's in here, along with his hat and stuff. And, and it was this big, as big as bigger than his head. And, and he, he always kept that pine cone in his room. And now I have it. The boys also are really into, my oldest is into, really into skiing and bicycling. He just bicycled down the coast, whole Oregon coast while we were on this trip, this last trip. And, uh, and he's done the STP, the Seattle to Portland, several times. 
several times with his daughter when she was growing up. So he had to he had to build a bigger bike every year because he builds his bikes too. And uh, and he's done it. He's done the Seattle to Portland a number of times. And he did a, and he did a kayaking trip too. You know you're getting old when your kids are starting to retire. <laughs> he's a retired Boeing engineer, but he's but he but he creates other jobs. Okay, where did like your family's love of sailing come from? We just love the water. I was I was a I was a baby on a boat. It was the beginning of World War II, and I I, I grew up I grew up in a harness with a, with a leash on me. Because I was I was born when we lived on the boat. And that was that was just before the war started. I was born in April, and the war started in December. You know how how the wheels are on a boat steering wheel. Well, she just hooked my, uh, the, the end of my, my leash over the, one of those, and then closed the door. Well, I opened the door, and I, she came back. She had gone next door real quick. She came back, and I was just dangling over the edge, just, just hanging out, not upset, not crying, just, just hanging out. And so she, so she, uh, hauled me up and she and after that she she left she 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 figured out a way to lock the 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 the, the thing so I couldn't get I can't remember how she did it but anyway that was that was I was the one that did that so it was a power boat and we were just sitting at the dock oh thankfully well she she wouldn't have yeah she wouldn't have been doing that yeah yeah I think it was a 47 rum chaser I couldn't think of it a while ago and when I was a baby, that the one that, with the sliding door. And I was the one that ran off the end of the dock, too. <laughs> Mom said, be sure her life jacket's on. And he said, Dad says, I'm watching it. I'm a good swimmer. And I just went <laughs> And by the time he got in the water, I was on the bottom. But it was only about 10 feet deep or something. But he, he brought me up. And I didn't jump off the end of the dock anymore, but I wasn't scared of it any, either. I just. And, oh, and when Florence Chadwick swam the English Channel, you probably don't, you don't ever remember hearing that, but swam across the English Channel, I thought, if she can do that, I can swim across Lake Crescent. So I did. And I was about, maybe I was 10 or 12. Wow. Lake Crescent was cold, too. Yeah. What have you uh, enjoyed about Lopez the most? The people. They're real. And 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 the and the, ex and, the, and the, the ability to just kind of create your own interesting things to do. I guess is a way to put it. Well, I'm a dancer. If you, you probably know that. Yeah. And Jim Gardner was my dance partner for years. But I've out I've outlived most of them. And even though I've, I've got. I've had Parkinson's for 15 years. And I still, I still dance. I go out on Friday night, and somebody drops me off because I don't drive after dark. <laughs> and I dance the first set, but I, but I, I get a ride home with somebody. I have somebody to bring me a ride home. But I still dance, and I, I, I need a walking stick to walk, but I can dance. I can just let go of that and start dancing. We could dance. We could take up the whole floor. If it was like that, if we were the only people out there, or we could dance like this in a tight spot if there was a lot of people on the floor. And he said, I can't throw you a curve. I can't. I said, that's because I know it's a fraction of a second before you do what you're going to do. What were the bands that you like to dance to around here? Cheap Friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of my favorites. And... Um, the Islander Band has gotten to be pretty good. What is it? What's it called? Uh, Sundown Rush. S Sundown Rush. Yeah, they're doing they're doing uh, some Johnny Cash and and uh, and they'll they'll play. There's, there's a couple songs they'll play earlier in the evening for me if I can't stay, and they always make a big fuss about me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And and the other a uh, couple of weeks ago. This, this darling young lady was, uh, just grabbed me off, off the chair and took me on the dance floor. She said, 
I'm Ron Fowler, yeah. yeah. Ron, she said, I'm Ron and Rochelle Fowler's daughter. And I thought she meant the older one, and I realized it was the younger daughter that was five years old when we first came here. And she was, and she, she grabbed me and took me on the dance floor just like I was somebody real special. And, and when she was five years old, we were leaving the harbor on Lopez, and she and her dad flew by at mast height, and she just looked and waved at us right there as she went by. And that was that little girl that danced with me the other night. <laughs> and people are pretty good about identifying themselves. Because I can't remember. Well, like, I thought she, she looked a little bit familiar, but, you know, I hadn't seen her since she was just a little bitty kid. You know one reason why I know so many generations? My mother was their childcare person. She, she, she took care of three gener two generations at least of, you know, you know um, oh, I can't think of the names of them all. But there's, there's an awful lot of kids that, 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 have, that, have, that are grown and bringing their children out now that I knew. You know Ronnie Lopez? Yep. Okay, he was 25, I think, when he came here, approximately. And, his, and Georgie was pregnant with, with uh, Rio. Rio. And the daughter was a, little, was a little girl. And not too long ago, I saw this tall, lanky guy come. I said, oh, hi. I was talking to him, thinking it was Rio. No, thinking it was Ron, and it was Rio. And they're both six foot five or six or whatever it is, both the same th slender build and the same expressions. I mean, and then all of a sudden I went, you're real. I hadn't seen him in about 20 years <laughs> or 15. I don't know how many long. But, but that happens all the time that I'll see. And, and people are pretty good about identifying themselves. Or I just ask them because I said, I know I know you, but I cannot remember which family you are. <laughs> Yeah. Mom took care of a lot of kids, and one time, one time, one of the kids said, "Why do you, why do you mind be so well, and and not me?" That what the one of the moms and she said, "Oh, and the, and, uh, and they said, because if I don't do what she says, she'll put me in a chair and you lecture me." She never laid a hand on him, but she'd, 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 she'd say, she'd, she'd, they'd, they'd let, she'd lecture me. <laughs> they adored her. That's, that's she was like a nanny. Nice. And, and on, on New Year's Eve, she always had a big overnight party. She told the kids, don't worry about driving, just, just leave the kids here and pick them up in the morning. <laughs> oh, and I, I also was the local dental hygienist. Oh, that's right. <laughs> we forgot that. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I worked for every dentist that's ever worked bed on Lopez Island until the new ones right now. I helped somebody move a boat down the coast, and he had something that had printed on it about, about the, a card or something that was sitting on his table. I said, what is this? Or maybe it was pencils with the name of it, something. And he, said, and he told me about it. It was a, a mission group out of the Bay Area originally. And uh, I said, well, how do you get involved? He says, you just call them and they put you, they, <laughs> they'll, they'll grab you. <laughs> they really need it. I did uh, five mission trips doing dental hygiene work. And two of them were in Jamaica. And actually there were five in Micronesia. And uh, one time I went, I used all my skills I went to the island of Kosherai in the, Fed in the Federated States of Micronesia by sailing from the Marshall Islands, 500 mile ocean crossing, as part of the crew. And uh, that was exciting. And it was on a multi hull, which I am not as fond of as I am a mono hull, or big, heavy mono hulls that just. And, uh, we made, we made huge changes in their lives because a lot of these people had no, no medical of any kind and we, we had medical dental groups come down. And they, they've 
they've managed to keep the mission going even during the pandemic or whatever it is. <laughs> um, and and, and they, the, they have people that have been blind for years and they do cataract surgery on them and they see, if you can imagine. Because they, they, they have so much sun that they get a lot of eye damage and uh, all kinds of things. But my, my son went with me to the, one of the Jamaica trips. But it changes your life to do something like that. It never is the same again. <laughs> one trip was five weeks. That was the one where I did the ocean crossing. Oh, and I also worked on a, cru on a cruise ship twice. We did, we did dentistry for the, the, the crew. Because they, they, they're working on this fancy boat, but they don't have care. And so we brought it to them. And I, I, I did a trip, I did round trip from Seattle to Alaska and back for two weeks, and I did a 22-day trip from California down to Florida. And we, we were doing dentistry for the, the crew, if, 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 if uh, I mean for the, you know, the people that worked in the, in the kitchens and stuff, in the, in the dining, dining area. I thought I was gonna get to do cruise trips like that a couple times a year, and they quit the program. I said to Mac, uh, we were going through the Panama Canal. I said, let's let's run down and let's run down and, and watch it. And the, the the ships, you know, are built to fit the canal. They just barely do. So we went down to our stateroom and watched the the, the wall go by. H have you ever been through the Panama Canal? Oh, it's 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 an amazing piece of machinery. That was an experience too. And I would have liked to have done it more in one run without coming in. Yeah. Uh, San Fran, uh, no, I mean, Nia Bay to San Francisco, offshore, out 100 miles and back in. We were, we were practicing with our sextant. And then I've, all, and then I've, I've gone all around Vancouver Island, which is hundreds of miles. But, not, but, but port hopping, you know, going from one to the other, sailing in between. And, and I've been to Desolation Sound. I, I circumnavigated Vancouver Island um, la, 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 10 years ago, maybe. And that was a, that was a highlight. <clears throat> I've got some marvelous pictures, if you ever want a slideshow. But the the longest trip was probably around Vancouver Island, but it was in it was in hops, and it was I was out the whole summer. I like to be out the whole summer. Several summers we just spent a month or two month or two cruising in the interior waters <clears throat> between here and the north end of Vancouver Island. No, I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't sail by myself. That's no fun. <laughs> um, I, I got to the north end of Vancouver Island right around the 4th of July. And that's half, that's half the route. But I, I was gone the whole summer. Uh, people do it in two or three weeks, but it's no fun that way. There's, it's just got so many, many nooks and crannies. And, and, and I, was, I had a small, 66 key spinning on the boat, a piano, and um, I was sitting at a, an anchorage on a little island on the outside of Vancouver Island, <clears throat> and this, these people came up and they went, wow, she was, the wife was from Germany, and she, do you know the, the tuna for Elisa? For Elisa. And she said, and here was a German tune drifting out of this boat. She said, I couldn't believe it. And so, and they got to be friends we'd see every once in a while. But that was kind of fun. The, 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 the piano put, surprised a lot of people. We gave, the, we gave the piano to Annie. You know Annie. Friends of hers went together and bought me a keyboard and so we could give the piano to her because she always adored that piano. She played for my, my wedding. 
on the boat. Yeah, yeah. It, it, there was Tom, my, my son Tom, the one that lived here, and Bruce and I. I think it was just the th three of us. No, there was one more, a friend at Tom's age. <clears throat> and we miscued and we hit, we hit the rocks at five knots and didn't even scratch the boat. But we had, we, it was a, a whole reef and we just backed out slowly, doing exactly the reciprocal of what we came in on and then turned it around and hit head for, for 50 fathoms of water. You gotta get 50 fathoms under you out there. And Tom was at the helmet, but he did not make a mistake. We, he, he did exactly what we told him to do, and I made the mistake to telling him wrong. But we, ne we never didn't sustain any damage. It's just amazing. But those are, those are tough holes. Didn't even have a scratch. And we hit it at five knots. From just, I mean, oh, it was horrible noise. Oh. You have to go to the top of the mast to do a lot of things. And I was gonna change the, what we called the anti-seagull device. It was just kind of a, a, a spray, a, 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 a wad of, of wires to, so that seagulls won't land on top of your mast and poop all over your deck. My son Tom was hauling me up there. I was up at the top of the mast, 40 feet up in the air. And it occurred to me that I had to stand up in the bosun's chair. <laughs> in order to reach the, over the top of the mast. But I tied myself on well, but I went. And somebody said, well, why didn't you send your son up? And I said, well, he's stronger. He can crank the thing up faster than I, better than I can. Where, where I, I can, all I have to do is sit there and forgot having to stand up. You know what I mean? Because the, the top of the, the bosun, bosun chair that you ride up in is about here, and the top of the mast is about there, so you've got to get to that. So well, lots, of, lots of interesting things happen when you're building a boat. I have visited every lighthouse on the coast from San Diego to the north end of Vancouver Island by land and by sea. That's been a, that's been a, but there's only one, there's one you cannot get on and that's the Tillamook Head Lighthouse, which is because it's on a rock, a big rock out in the middle of the bay. But, yeah. but every, but every, Every port that I can get into, I've been into. Because you can't, you have to, you have to have enough height for your mast and enough depth for your, for your engine. When we went, when we made our first trip up there, in 1980, I guess it was 80, the chart had that, that there was a light ship. There used to be ships with a big light on them. Instead of, did you know that? Yeah, in, instead, instead of lighthouses, and so we were expecting to see the, the last, the last light, lighthouse, on a light ship on the coast, and we got there, and it had been, re had been replaced by a light, so there was no light ship anymore. It was, and our chart was just, it was just right in that time when, when the. And so we got we got pictures of that. And now that have you ever been to the to the to the provincial or the museum at uh, Astoria? Well, that that light ship is in is part of that museum. And and do you know about the direct reverse diesel engines? No. Well, they're 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 quite a complicated machine. You come in and you have to. You have to reverse them or else you'll run right through the dock. But that's a, that's a very basic explanation. <laughs> but but they have that they have that that boat that boat and one of those engines at that museum. If you ever have a chance to go to that museum, it's fabulous. I had I had a hundred ton license. I think he started out with a hundred ton and got I think he ended up with three hundred. I'm not sure. He just got another boat. Well, he's 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 so well known and so uh, talented sailor, whatever you call it that these, these people want to go with him and they are paying for the boat. She's a jewel. She was, Yohani was two and a half years old when they met. And we met her right after that. And pa Patrick, <laughs> this, is, this is a funny story. Patrick was, they, they were having a drink at the, at, the, at the bar there at Half Moon Bay and 
Patrick said, look at that outrageous little girl buttoning and then unbuttoning her arshkoshes. She was, you know, the her arshkoshes. She was unbuttoning and unbuttoning them. And that was, that was Yohani. <laughs> and they started talking to her. Mutton's mom and Patrick were out, and Yohani and, and, and uh, um, Dana were out. And she just, and then they finally started talking to her, and that's how they met. Yeah, by the time they left for the South Pacific, they had sailed up the coast and back down, built my boat. I think she was about six when they made the Pacific crossing to Tahiti, when Patrick was down there with my mom. And, uh, and Daddy even went. No, they, they were divorced years before. Uh, in fact, when, he, when we were getting ready to come down here, he asked if he could come, and we said, it's up to Patrick and Dana. It's their, it's their trip. And they said, fine, you know. And he, he was... He was well behaved, except he, he drank, but when we, got, <laughs> when we got ready to go, Mom was going to buy a bottle for each of us, because it's, it's much cheaper than it is down there. And uh, when we got to Daddy, asked him what he wanted, he said he wanted 151. And, and he never drank anything except whiskey. But 151 has more alcohol in it. <laughs> so he could get more alcohol into one bottle. <laughs> and when, when we got ready to come home, I, I left half of mine with Dana and Patrick, and Dana left a little bit of hers, and Daddy's was long gone. <laughs> but, but he did okay. And he'd sit, he'd sit in Port, Port Angeles, that's where he lived, and he, that's where he grew up, and he'd say, oh, this is my son's boat, and he'd tell, tell, everybody, tell everybody about it. He was so proud. <laughs> feel sad about retiring and not being able to do so much, I play my tapes. That's what my mother used to say, I play my tapes. <laughs> well, Mom and I went to um, Fiji. They say Fiji, Fiji. <laughs> uh, and she always talked about going back. And then she said, I've decided I'm just going to play my tapes, honey. I don't have to go back. <laughs> now I feel that way about the Galapagos. That was that was the, that that was that was that's the only thing really that's on my bucket list. So I just wear my my I just wear my Galapagos t-shirt that somebody gave me. I guess that's about all.